Uki Mamini Kwa kuamini Kweli Hatu tu Gopa Wali yuchu Kasana Watapata Raha Saya Tomba our elder in charge at Wombe before we do an introduction. Okay, let's let's pray. Kind of loving Master Father, we thank you this evening, Father. You have been with us since morning until this moment, Father. And we want to introduce the youth week of prayer, Father. Father, we pray that you may come and dwell among the stars. Even as we start this whole week of dedication of our youth and the entire church. Father, I bring upon your guests that you have given us to be with us the entire week. Father, we pray that you are going to be with him and bless him most abundantly, Father. As we start off, Father, let thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, my name is Wycliffe, youth leader, and uh, we are just starting off the youth week of prayer. And so we encourage each and everyone to attend so that we may be blessed together. We have our speaker already here. Our speaker is called Mr. Eliezer Obure. He's from Edens, Eden Springs, yeah, Eden Springs, Kuapa Utawala. So he's going to speak to us. And remember, it's a youth week of prayer. So he's just going to do an introduction for today. And then starting from the whole of this week up to, to Namalija Sabbath, we will be here from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. So it's my prayer that you come, attend, and see what the Lord has done, what has prepared for us. Let me welcome the speaker. Together with me, let's... Put him in prayers as he comes. Karibu. Happy Sabbath, Church. God is good. And all the time. Na shukuru sana kwa sababu ya fulsa nilio nao katika jioni ya leo. Na ninajua kwamba tumechoka. Tangu wa subuhi tumekua katika kikao hiki kwa sababu ya kuabudu na ninajua inapofika wakati kama huu wengi wetu tusha tayari weka mawazo yetu kuelekea kule nyumbani lakini ningependa nikawe mfupi wa kila kitu kimawazo na pia katika kufanya utangulizi wa juma letu na mahombi ili kwamba uh, tupate muda mzuri kuanzia kesho tutakapokuwa na tutakapokuwa pamoja kwa juma mzima hadi siku ya sabato. Jinsi ambavyo umekwishasikia kwa jina anaitwa Eliza Obure. Ninatoka Eden Springs SDA Church ambayo ni branch ya Nairobi South Church. Lakini sasa ile inapatikana kule uh, utawala. Na ningependa kuwa lete utangulizi katika juma hili la mahombi wale ambao wametazama kwa undani mada kuu katika siku ama katika juma mzima ambao katika Kiswahili tunasema kaulimbiu inasema loving the forgotten yani kuwapenda wale ambao wamesauliwa may it be in the society katika manyumba zetu katika hali ya kila siku mala popote tulipo loving the forgotten ndio itakayokuwa mada ya juma mzima ambayo itakuwa inajengwa na vichwa mbalimbali mbali katika kila siku tutakavyokuwa tukijumuika katika maombi katika jioni ya leo katika jioni ya leo ningependa kwamba tukaombe ili kwa muda mfupi tulionao tukaangalie maandiko ndipo tukaite neema za Mwenyezi Mungu katika maombi ndipo tutawanyike tukaenda kule kule nyumbani kwetu 
basi na tuombe baba na mguu wetu ishie mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe asante kwa sababu wewe ni mwaminifu naomba kwamba uwepo wako uwe pamoja nasi katika sabato ya leo takatifu uwe kwamba unene pamoja na kila mmoja wetu utuhishe na kutufanyia matengenezo ya kipekee katika juma hili mzima hata kama uchovu umeingia wakati huu naomba kwamba bwana roho wako mtakatifu akapate kutayarisha kwa sababu ya baraka za jioni ya leo ninaponena naomba kwamba ukayatia maneno katika kinywa changu ukanitumie kama chombo tu ili kwamba bwana kupitia kwangu nikapate kufikia watoto wako kwa pamoja nasi sasa na tamilele ni katika jina lako tumeomba na kuamini amina a uh, Ningependa tukaingie katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter number 3. The book of Acts chapter number 3. The book of Acts chapter number 3 as from verse number 1. And beloved, I want us to dedicate this week of prayer to seek for the face of the Lord. To make it more of an extension of the 10 days week of prayer that we had before. And I want us to have an experience with the Lord both in his word and also in connection through prayer. I want us to turn to the book of Acts chapter number 3 verse number 1. The Bible says, "Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour." Our subject is when the lame walks when the lame walks and i want us to do some exposition here listen to what the bible says now peter and john went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer the ninth hour beloved listen peter and john were two disciples of god Peter one of the commentators say that Peter loved God but Jesus loved John actually John is introduced to us as the beloved disciple the bible tells us after the death and resurrection and ascension of Christ Jesus Peter and John became two neat friends who were closely knit who were connected who were doing things together and the bible tells us here now peter and john went up together beloved the bible tells us in amos chapter 3 verse number 3 that can two people walk together unless they be done what they be agreed there is a reason for agreement beloved any cause that agrees in anything has got the power When people come together with one mind even if they have agreed on the wrong cause things seem to work in the same dimension Beloved that is why I'm talking to the young people who are here it is very important to be aware of the people that you associate yourself with John and Peter were well associated they were friends and their walk was always up to the temple Who are your friends One man by the name Victor Hugo says that show me your friends and I'll tell you your character. John and Peter were friends who were walking together and the Bible tells us here that they were walking together to the temple at the hour of prayer. They cherished the hour of prayer. They cherished the moment of prayer. I've always more often than not worked in an environment where I have Muslims and when the hour of prayer comes even if they are in the middle of the transaction even if they are in the middle of a, a business that is more viable that involves millions of money when such a time comes they keep you standing they keep you waiting it is your patience that will uh, will make you have whichever that you want they leave you where you are wanachukua ile kitu wanaita msalio wanaweka chini wanaanza kusali at the hour of prayer It is so saddening that most of us Christians 
the so cherished, the so called Seventh day Adventist, we do not have a particular how of prayer that we cherish and take our time to pray. Beloved, look at the Jews from whom the Bible history is borrowed from. They had a particular hour of prayer. The Bible tells us of someone like Daniel. Daniel used to pray three times a day. Even at a time when they were told not to pray, they were supposed to concentrate their efforts in worshiping a king and idols that had been erected. For Daniel, he went into the house three times a day. He opened a window that headed to Jerusalem to seek for the face of the Lord. A careful Christian has a planned day. He has particular times that he sets aside to seek for the face of the Lord in prayer. And beloved, I want to say the reason as to why more often than not we as Adventists, more often than not people talk about ill about us. Sijui kama mwa isikia watu wakisema kwamba mtu wakipagawa na pepo wanaanza kusema atienda kwa watu wa roho waende kuombea. Hawa watu hawana roho. Beloved, I'm telling you, this is the true church of the Lord, a church that should be doing deliverance, a church that should be praying, a church that has got the power, but we've neglected that which that gives us the power that we need in these last days. And beloved, that is the reason as to why the general conference has set aside that we must have a time to pray, a time to seek for the face of the Lord in prayer. And the Bible tells us that now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Beloved, they had three most precious hours. They had, that is, they used to pray at nine in the morning, at twelve, and at three in the evening. This was the ninth hour of the day, Satisa. They consistently kept the hour of prayer. They kept time. They kept the clock because they knew the importance of seeking the Lord while he is found. Beloved, I want us to turn to the book of Psalm. Listen to what the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm, chapter number 55. Listen to what the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm, chapter number 55, verse number 17. Listen to what the Bible says. In the book of Psalm, chapter number 55, verse number 17, the Bible says, Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. This is David. Beloved, the people are talking about the experience of prayer, the moment that they cherished and they had with the Lord, have people who had everything that this life gives. Look at David. David was the king of Israel. He was actually, we can translate the king to be like the president of Israel. Is, it was like, it could be likened like, is like our, our present Uhuru Kenyatta. What does Uhuru Kenyatta lack? He has everything at his disposal. What kind of prayers, by the way, let me tell you, the prayers that you have here are not the equal prayers that Ke Ke Uhuru Kenyatta has. Uhuru Kenyatta does not pray for a job. He does not pray for school fees for his children. He does not pray that uh, he may get something to eat tomorrow. He does not pray that God gives him and sustains his job to pay rent. The needs that you have are so different and so distanced from the, the, from the needs that Uhuru Kenyatta has. Beloved, on, in, on equal measure, David didn't have these problems. If I may ask just a basic, a, a basic question, between you and Uhuru Kenyatta, who needs more prayers? Who needs more prayers? Who needs to cherish the hour of prayer more than the other? The other is that the, is that the icon of success. Some of us, we, we are struggling to even know our purposes, and yet we cannot even pray. This is David saying that evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry, and they shall hear my voice. Beloved, the reason as to why the church looks feeble, weak, that cannot be trusted. The reason as to why we struggle with the many truths that we have as Seventh day Adventists, it is because we do not pray. Beloved, I'm, I'm convicted beyond doubt that this is the true church of the Lord. I'm convicted beyond doubt that this is the church that has all the oracles of God. But I'm equally convinced 
that we have a little power to live by the word that we have. The reason as to why we are struggling with our messages, the reason as to why we are struggling with health reform, the reason as to why we are struggling with prophetic messages that should actually enlighten us and know the times that we are living in, it is because we've not cherished the power of prayer that gives us the power to grasp and live by thus, says the Lord. And that is why, beloved, this evening, the Bible tells us, now, I want us to read the first four verses of uh, Acts chapter number three before we can have a moment of prayer together. The Bible says in verse number two, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. I want you to get what the Bible says. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. This was a lame man. He did not become lame by accident. He was lame right from birth. And the Bible tells us that whom they laid daily at the temple, which is called beautiful. One of the things that actually shocks me is about the consistency of those ones who were carrying him on a daily basis. Daily basis. And he was not carried to do anything. His work was to be carried, put in a, in a specific place to ask, to beg for arms. I've always been in town, and actually town is my business because that is where I do business. There are people that I've seen in spots for years. Same spots. Where they beg money. Actually, their work is to beg for money. For those of us who are in, consistent in passing through some routes, you can see people who are begging money daily on the same spot. I've been to town at a time five in the morning when people are bringing these beggars into town so that they can beg. I've been privileged to be in town at a time when some of the people are coming for their, for their lame people to carry them back home. Consistence. When someone remains on the same spot for a long period of time, that one means that was a good spot for hunting. By the way, the Bible tells us that whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Beloved, I want you to know one of the characteristics of the beggars is that they keep time. By the way, beggars, they keep time. They arise early while it is still dawn, very early, so that they can be able to catch up with the traffic in the morning, those ones who are rushing to work. When you've boarded a vehicle, to town and uh, the transport is 80 shillings and you've given 100 bob, you've been given a change of 20 bob, they are aiming at the 20 bob that you have been given as a change. Consistently early in the morning while it is still dark, they are in the same spot. Beloved, this is what was taking place with the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. I was reading a little history about this gate called Beautiful. The gate called Beautiful was meant, actually was constructed from the gold and the, 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 the gold and the, and the brass, the, the, the gold and the silver. It was so expensive because it had a connection between the highway going to the, to the Jews and to the Gentiles. But it was placed specifically at the point where the Jews were getting into the temple because the Jews purportedly could spot him and have mass on him, the Gentiles could not. Beloved, listen to what the Bible tells us here. And his basic task was to ask alms from those who entered the temple. One man says that there are only two people who can never be, who can never be, be poor on earth. One is actually one person who cannot be poor on earth. One is the poor man. 
because he's already poor. He cannot be poor more than he is. Number two, another person who cannot be poor is actually a beggar. You will never be poor if you've ever seen the kind of statistics that have been given and the reports about the people who beg. Most of them, they own mansionettes. Even those ones who manage their money, their people, it's a business to some of the people. You saw some of the documentaries that were running through TV sometimes back where people have even go even to other countries like Tanzania to, to actually have them, hire them to come and do the work. So the kind of people, the only two people who can ever be poor on earth is one, the poor person, and number two, a beggar. And the reason as to why this person was begging, he was lame and he could not work by himself. Beloved, these are the people that we call the forgotten in the society. People that we overlook. People that we are more advantaged to. People that, you see, there are advantages that we have that our people do not have. You have the advantage of sight. There are people who do not see. You have the advantage of hearing. There are people who do not hear. You have the advantage of walking. There are people who do not walk. You have the advantage of having whichever that you have. There are people who do not. Beloved, loving the forgotten in the society. Now listen to what the Bible says in verse number 3. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. Number 4. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Beloved, I want you to listen. His work was to beg daily. Kazi yake ilikuwa ni kuomba kila siku. And they were not tired about this. They had formed a habit of coming every day at the gate. Beloved, I want to ask you this question. What habit have you formed in your relation with God? Do you have a habit that cannot be broken about your prayer life with God? Do you have a habit that has been founded, that has been cherished, a habit that you can be able, everyone can know that if I go to someone's place, this is the hour of prayer. Beloved, listen. Peter and John, for, him, for them to fix this, they did not overlook. But Peter said, look at me. Fix your eyes on me. Look at me straight. Focus. Focus. For him, his life was consistently about begging. But Peter and John wanted to transform such a kind of life. They wanted to change that. Beloved, if you ever seen, some of the beggars are actually trained, are trained on how to, to even beg. By them, most of them, they smile. Before they even shake the combat that they have for the coins, they smile. It's idea. You see, I, the, some of them have been trained because but, Job, but Peter and John were on, a serious, were on a serious mission. And they wanted to do a work to do, that could be able to bring transformation. A work they wanted to leave a stamp that could not be forgotten. And they looked straight into his, into his eyes. Beloved, this evening, for the interest of time, we cannot go deep. We have every reason as to why we should go deep. But for the interest of time, I want to say this. We have formed habits in life that may not be broken. Some of us have cherished some habits in life of a sinful nature that needs to be broken. Some of us have formed habits that have, they have been consistently sinning and forgive and actually asking for forgiveness from the Lord, sinning and going back from the same for the back to the same sin, back to the same habit. One man says that you cannot do the same thing consistently in the same way and expect different results. Actually, that one is defined as madness. 
There are some of us that our Christian life, there is nothing that can change our Christian life completely. Since we were baptized, our work is to wake up on Sabbath morning, prepare food to come to church, and even carry packed lunch, come and eat, listen, go back, to, go back home in the evening, hold meetings in the church, go back home. And this has been a system in our lives thinking that this is Christianity. There are people who have become stagnant even in our Christian lifestyle. You've been in church for the last 30 years, but you cannot, you cannot stand here to teach prophetic studies. You've been in the church for the last 50 years, but you can never teach about health here because you've not accepted the same messages that purportedly should transform your life. There are habits that must be broken. And these habits will be broken by fixing our eyes on Jesus. Praise the Lord. And that is the reason as to why you find, by the way, some people who have formed habits for them, here come, here go, they are ambassadors. Someone is 35 years, is still ambassador. They are not graduating. There are people who have formed habits every year, every year. Even, beloved, let me tell you, this church has got even, it has, a, it has a, an age, a, 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 it has a, an age value, an age gap for every class. Even if, if it is evangelists, if, if, if it is uh, party finders, if it is ambassadors, if it is youth, and whichever, it has a timeline. There are people who have never accepted this. And that is why you see people in the youth group forever. A time must come when you must accept responsibility. Change the habits. Beloved, this evening, we are here as Seventh-day Adventists. People that God has saved from darkness to such a matter as light as this. But the same God wants to see a difference, a different life in us. And I want us this evening, beloved, we pray that God may bless us in the course of this week. We have messages that are going to come to us. Messages that will work towards transforming us. Messages that will work to arouse our interest into the right path. Messages that will actually wake us up from our slumberlands. And prepare us for the soon return of Christ Jesus. But our souls must be prepared for this. And I want us this evening to take our personal time. Just as we are seated here. To seek for the face of the Lord in prayer. You have your personal life the way you are. You know your personal issues. You know the things that you are struggling with. You know you are alive as it is. There are things that you don't like with yourself. And there is a transformation that you need from the Lord. I want us to take a moment of silence. Talk to God in prayer. In a very special way. You talk to God in prayer. Make yourself known to the Lord. Converse the sins that you know well by yourself. Ask the Lord to give you the power for transformation. I want to give you two to three minutes. Talk to God in your personal words. Make your life known to the Lord in this evening before we do our second session of prayer and pray together.
Sini pite mokozi Unisi Praise the Lord. Just before we finish, I want us to see the secret of prayer in one verse, and then we do our second session of prayer before we go home. Where did Peter and John find the habit of praying together? The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, verse number 42, the Bible tells us, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Meaning that they were studying together, they were consistent in truth, they were studying the doctrines together. By the way, they were people of the books. Because any doctrine that could come, it could have eroded them from the truth and swayed them aside. They were studying and taking their time together. And it says, and the fellowship, very important. There are some of us who do not value the power of fellowship, the gift of fellowship, of coming together to fellowship with our fellow Christians. Beloved, breaking the bread together, worshiping together, attending church services together. There are people who separate themselves to worship from home. Let me tell you, Power in prayer is cherished not only when you pray alone, but when we have the faithful with which or with whom you take your time together to pray. And it says, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Beloved, I'm telling you, there is power when, Christ, when Christians unite themselves to pray. There is power. The Bible tells us about the church that was united to pray for Peter when he was in jail. They had come together in a house to pray and there is power when prayers are sent as one punch in one accord to the heavens. And I want us this evening, beloved as we are, just before we go, a gist of prayer. I want us to go into tools and I'm giving directions on how we pray now. I want us to go into twos, uh, uh, gender by gender, a man and a man, a lady and a lady. You will pray with the opposite sex if the opposite sex is your wife or your son or your daughter. But without which, I want us to go into twos, man by man and lady by lady. We go into twos and I'm giving you requests on the things to pray for. Number one, I want you to pray. I want you to pray for this, week youth, for this youth week of prayer. Pray that power may attend this week of prayer. That God's will may be done. Transformation may be seen in, this, uh, in the course of this week or youth week of prayer. And number two, in a very special way, I want us to pray for our church, the Seventh-day Adventist church. Pray for this church right from the general conference to the local church. Pray that God may animate us and energize us one more time before Christ Jesus comes back. We need to finish the work. Pray that God may use this church as a tool and a weapon through which the rest of the world will be reached. And number three, I now want us to pray that God may fill us with the Holy Spirit in great abundance. 
By the way, the only thing that can be able to make a difference between us and others is the presence of the Holy Ghost. Pray that God may fill each one of us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those are at least the three prayer requests that I'm giving you. If you have something that is paining you, something that you may want a partner to pray for, the one that you're going to pray with, that one now you can share as you're going to choose to pray. But I'm limiting my prayer requests into three. What are we going to pray for? Let's hear. Number one. Number one. I'm not getting you. Number one. The youth week of prayer. Number two. The church. Very important. And number three. The Holy Spirit. Invite him. We need the power. And beloved, I'm sure in the course of this week, God is going to work miracles. And prayers must be answered. I believe in prayers. And I know God works miracles. So I want us to go into tools as we seek for the face of the Lord in prayer at this hour. Pass me not, O gentles.
ikiwepo jina la Yesu lenye uwezo mkubwa wa kukushinda yeye ni alfa na omega asiyeti kiswa na chochote kwa nini Yesu atakushinda utokoze mungu bwana wa mabwana atawezi kulalamika Be 
I want us to stand. I want us to stand. Ume choka je ume sumbuka mwambi yesu sumbuko lako unaya milia ya pita yo. Mwambi ye Yesu peke Mwambi ye Yesu Mwambi ye Yesu Sumbuko lako Yurafiki amini Hakuna rafiki kama ye ye Mwambi ye Yesu peke Je machozi ya kulenga lenga Mwambi ye Yesu sumbu kolako Wale mewa na dambiro Mwambi ye Yesu peke Mwambi ye Yesu Mwambi ye Yesu Sumbu kolako Yurafiki amini Hakuna rafiki kama ye ye Mwambi ye Yesu peke Waogo pa shida na majonzi Mwambi ye Yesu Sumbu kolako Wasumbu ki ya mambo ya jayo Mwambi ye Yesu peke Mwambi ye Yesu Mwambi ye Yesu Sumbu kolako Yurafiki amini Hakuna rafiki kama ye ye Mwambi ye Yesu peke Kuwazia 
kifo kukutisha Mwambie Yesu sumbu kolako Watamani ya ufalme wake Mwambie Yesu peke Mwambie Yesu Mwambie Yesu Sumbu kolako Yurafiki amini Hakuna rafiki kama yeye Mwambie Yesu peke Our Father and our God who lives in heaven Glory and honor be unto you forever We are so grateful For you had a plan for us the reason as to why you sent your son to come and down our behalf. We are coming to you asking for forgiveness of our sins and cleansing from our iniquities. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind and cast out the demonic forces and his agencies from our midst. And Lord, we pray that in the course of this week, that you may meet each one of us at our point of need. Work a miracle in transforming our lives for the better. Meet that child meet that young man, meet that mother, meet that dad, those ones who will dedicate their times to come and seek for your face. I pray that, Lord, you also set your time aside to meet their needs at their place. I pray, Lord, in a very special way that even as we keep seeking for your face, put your spirit in us, prepare us for your soon return. Equip us that, Lord, in your soon return, we may be able to meet you in the clouds when you come back the second time to take us home. Oh, Lord of heaven, we are living in a world that is so sinful. We pray that having had mercy on us, help us to also have mercy on others who are also suffering out there. Whichever that it takes, Lord, we pray that you may put in us the spirit to sacrifice in these last days. Help each one of us, Lord. Now, Lord of heaven, as we go home, I want to pray this evening that as your children have prayed and called upon your name, Lord, there are secret prayers that have been offered unto you in their low tones. I pray that, Lord, you may begin answering our prayers. Work a miracle in transforming us by renewing our minds that, Lord, upon your soon return, we may be counted tall to stand. Lord, be with us now and even forevermore is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to wish you God's blessings until tomorrow evening again as we meet to begin the program now fully. May God be with you.